Doom Eternal is a pretty awesome game, but unfortunately its post-launch has been marred by a number of controversies with the latest one involving Denuvo. As I reported previously, the reviews right now are mixed, and scrolling down you'll find that looking at the graph there's just a, a wide array of negative reviews. The number of negative reviews have just skyrocketed since the controversy began. And this has in large part to do with the implementation of Denubo's new anti-cheat system that grants the software kernel zero access, which is just a little too much access for many people's comfort. And that has raised security concerns. And beyond that, there are concerns surrounding performance, and there is also the broken Linux compatibility that people are complaining about. And reported issues include stop errors, blue screens, performance degradation, reduced frame rates, stuttering, excessive load times, etc., inability to launch game on Windows, driver continues to run even after it is uninstalled, driver reinstalling itself without the game being ran, and game no longer working on Linux. Now, the main concerns were around security, but people also noticed that with the latest update, there was just an all-around drop in performance and stability, and a lot of people figured maybe that's also attributed to this de novo anti-cheat. Here we have a YouTube video kind of showing this individual who played the game for like 80 hours, running it butter smooth, but with this latest update, all of a sudden, as you can see right here as they continue to play the game, eventually the game just sort of crashes out of the blue, like so. And this is something we see throughout this whole video. And the degradation in performance and stability was also confirmed by Bethesda support when they tweeted out on May 17th, 2020, quote, the development team is investigating reports of crashes and performance issues for some PC users after applying update one in Doom Eternal. We'll provide additional information as soon as it is available. Just all around, people were pretty upset with Bethesda and id for pulling this, for kind of adding de novo and anti-cheat without a better heads up since a lot of people wouldn't have purchased the game if they had known that they would be implementing this de novo anti-cheat system that grants this piece of software kernel zero level of access a lot of people just don't feel comfortable with that. Unsurprisingly, its software has heard of the backlash. They've been keeping their ears close to the ground and kind of taking in all the feedback before today on May 20th, 2020, they released the following Reddit post in which they announced how they would be proceeding forward with update 1.1 with the intention being to address a lot of the concerns and removing Denubo anti-cheat and addressing a number of crashes. So here is the Reddit post in question written by Marty Stratton, executive producer for Doom Eternal. Here's what he had to say. I want to provide our PC community the latest information on a number of topics related to Update 1, which we released this past Thursday. Our team has been looking into the reports of instability and performance degradation for some users, and we have also seen the concerns around our inclusion of de novo anti-cheat. As is often the case, things are not as clear-cut as they seem, so I'd like to include the latest information on the actions we're taking, as well as offer some context around the decisions we have made. We are preparing and testing PC-only update 1.1 that includes the changes and fixes noted below. We hope to have this rolled out for players within a week. Our team's original decision to include Denuvo anti-cheat in Update 1 was based on a number of factors. Protect battle mode players from cheaters now, but also establish consistent anti-cheat systems and processes as we look ahead to more competitive initiatives on our battle mode roadmap. Establish cheat protection in the campaign now in preparation for the future launch of Invasion, which is a blend of campaign and multiplayer. Kernel level integrations are typically the most effective in preventing cheating. Now, just because something is effective doesn't necessarily mean it's a process people will be comfortable with. You have to find a balance of both an effective method that people are also okay with, and that's where I think de novo anti-cheat failed. A lot of people feel as though that level of access could open up the floodgates to exploits that could potentially lead to security compromises that a lot of people are not willing to risk. Next up, Denuvo's integration met our standards for security and privacy. Now, it may have the best of intentions by saying that the Denuvo integration meets their standards for security and privacy, but the average customer, the average player, doesn't necessarily know what that vague statement 
entails. They don't really know what they necessarily mean by meeting standards for security and privacy. People can't just always take a company's word for them saying we will protect you and your privacy, and you know we'll enforce the best security possible. We are completely foolproof with this. You know, people have to kind of assess for themselves whether something is worth the risk or whether something looks kind of questionable. And for a lot of people, even though they're kind of vaguely saying it meets our standards of security and privacy, that's just not good enough for those uncomfortable with the Denuvo implementation. Next, players were disappointed on Doom 2016 with our delay in adding anti-cheat technology to protect that game's multiplayer. And so with this game, they wanted to really ensure that the anti-cheat is out there as soon as possible. It then continues, despite our best intentions, feedback from players has made it clear that we must reevaluate our approach to anti-cheat integration. With that, we will be removing the anti-cheat technology from the game in our next PC update. As we examine any future of anti-cheat in Doom Eternal, at a minimum, we must consider giving campaign-only players the ability to play without anti-cheat software installed, as well as ensure that the overall timing of any anti-cheat integration better aligns with player expectations around clear initiatives like ranked or competitive play, where demand for anti-cheat is far greater. So the fact that those who had no intention of engaging with any of Doom Eternal's online features who just wanted to play the campaign were forced to install and use De nouveau anti-cheat with its security concerns and all was a major point of contention. And then as far as setting expectations, yeah, it's always important to set the proper expectations. People were not warned that De nouveau anti-cheat implementation was coming prior to their purchasing the game. And again, a lot of people might have, you know, deemed this to be a little too much for comfort and might have decided not to purchase the game had they known about this. And also a lot of people feel as though De Nuvo anti-cheat with its Kernel Zero axis is a bit much. It's a bit of a nuclear option for a mode, battle mode, that not a lot of people engage with. Most people just play the campaign and that's that. The battle mode player base is probably not that big. And so to affect everyone, to sort of put everyone under the same umbrella of De Nuvo anti-cheat, despite not everyone wanting to engage with that mode or even the upcoming invasion mode, it was just not the right move and not letting people know beforehand was also not the right move. And it's good to see that they're acknowledging this. Now I do wanna highlight that they might be hinting at the possibility of bringing back De Nuvo anti-cheat down the line because they talk right here about competitive initiatives on our battle mode roadmap, like they intend to add more competitive elements to that mode. And then right here, they say that they wanna ensure the overall timing of any anti-cheat integration better aligns with player expectations around clear initiatives like ranked or competitive play where demand for anti-cheat is far greater. So it sounds like they're saying that down the line when they do implement more competitive and ranked stuff, that's when they'll implement anti-cheat. I have to wonder whether it's just going to be the same de novo anti-cheat implementation or if they're going to find ways to dial it back. They've already said that they're going to make it so that single player folks don't have to engage with anti-cheat at all, but is it going to actually be that same de novo anti-cheat with kernel zero access, or are they going to find another solution? I don't know, just keep an eye out for that. They might add some sort of anti-cheat system down the line. I just don't know what shape that will take, and uh, it will have to be careful about that implementation if they don't wish to incur another wrathful scenario like this. Marty then adds, it is important to note that our decision to include anti-cheat was guided by nothing other than the factors and goals I've outlined above, all driven by our team at id Software. I've seen speculation online that Bethesda, our parent company and publisher, is forcing these or other decisions on us, and it's simply untrue. So Bethesda didn't mandate id to implement de novo anti-cheat. This was a decision that the developers over at id made and it was a bad decision on their part the way they executed this. So it is good for them to clarify this. I didn't know myself whether this was a Bethesda thing or an it thing, but now it is being relayed that uh, it is taking full responsibility for this situation. 
It's also worth noting that our decisions to remove the anti-cheat software is not based on the quality of the Denuvo anti-cheat solution. Many have unfortunately related the performance and stability issues introduced in Update 1 to the introduction of anti-cheat. They are not related. So setting aside the security concerns, when it comes to the degradation in performance and stability as outlined here in this Reddit post or as outlined by YouTube users like this individual who showed how often the game crashes now, all of that has seemingly more to do with changes that they made to the game itself rather than the implementation of the Nuvo anti-cheat. This is something that id wanted to emphasize. And then they added, through our investigation, we discovered and have fixed several crashes in our code related to customizable skins. We were also able to identify and fix a number of other memory related crashes that should improve overall stability for players. All of these fixes will be in our next PC update. I'd like to note that some of these issues were very difficult to reproduce and we want to thank a number of our community members who worked directly with our engineers to identify and help reproduce these issues. Finally, we believe the performance performance issues some players have experienced on PC are based on a code change we made around VRAM allocation. We have reverted this change in our next update and expect the game to perform as it did at launch. So apparently this change to VRAM allocation is the main culprit behind performance and stability woes surrounding the latest Doom Eternal update, rather than that being something that de novo anti-cheat is directly responsible for. The post finally concludes with please stay tuned to the official Doom Eternal community channels for more on the rollout of this update. As always, thank you for your passion and commitment to Doom Eternal. Marty Stratton, executive producer, Doom Eternal. Now you can already see, judging from the 96% upvote rate, that people are very happy with the way it responded. This feels like a very open and transparent way of approaching this controversy, relaying exactly what happened, where they went wrong, and actually taking responsibility while also listening to the feedback from the community and actually removing de novo anti-cheat due to the security concerns while also clarifying some of the wrong speculation that is out there right now. I think it is doing a great job with communicating all around whenever a controversy pops up. Same thing goes for this open letter that they published after the Mick Gordon controversy sort of spread around the internet. This open letter was written by Marty Stratton, and he did a good job of highlighting exactly what happened behind the scenes and respectfully noted that Mick Gordon had a part to play in why Doom Eternal's official soundtrack release was of lesser quality. It was his inability to sort of deliver on time and the like, despite its flexibility with scheduling and delaying. Despite all of that, Mick Gordon couldn't deliver his work on time, and so that led to a lot of issues behind the scenes, and all of that was relayed in this open letter in a respectful and graceful manner. And same thing here, you know, there isn't sort of this condescending tone, they just, in a respectful manner, outline everything. And more importantly, again, they own up to their mistakes of setting the wrong expectations and sort of implementing this in a way where it's universal across all players, including those who didn't want anything to do with the online modes and only wanted to engage with single player. So all around just, uh, yeah, uh, this is a good response, I would say. And many seem to agree with uh, people posting stuff like Marty the Controversy Slayer. And then scrolling further down, you'll find people saying stuff like, I really appreciate the communication and transparency we have had from id Marty. Looking forward to see what the next patch brings. So assuming that everything outlined for patch 1.1 is true, People shouldn't have to worry about de novo anti-cheat security concerns, and they should see the performance and stability of the game go back to the way it was at launch. So all around, good vibes from this. All around, good news, assuming they deliver on this update that is coming out within the week. So not a long wait. So yeah, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's everything you need to know about this situation. I think most people will be pleased with the way it decided to respond, the way they have reacted, the way they've actually taken the community feedback into consideration rather than, you know, lashing out at them or just, you know, just responding in a less than ideal way as many other game companies tend to do. So with that, let me know in the comments below what your take is on all of this. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.